Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome on back to another reaction video. If you have no idea who I am, my name is Sam, aka OGB Reacts. I'm a first time movie reactor here on YouTube, posting every Tuesday and Friday, and I also stream over here occasionally as well. Today's video is a level 5 Patreon tier movie request from Kathy Ice. And Kathy wants me to watch Witness for the Prosecution from 1957. This is one of those films that I've never even heard of it before, so I have literally no idea what's going to happen whatsoever. But as per usual, I am very excited to watch and I hope that you guys are too. So with that, thank you so much to Kathy Ice for requesting for me to watch this film. I hope you specifically enjoy this reaction. And to everybody over on Patreon, I really do appreciate you over there. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope you're enjoying all the full unedited reaction videos and the access to the polls. If you want to watch the full unedited version of this video or to anything else on my channel, you can absolutely do so over on my Patreon and it's $5 a month for that. I also have a tier over there that is solely for the polls which are ran every single Friday and that is two dollars a month for that. So yeah never heard of this movie before don't know what it's about really whatsoever but again I'm excited to watch. With that really do hope that you guys like this reaction and I shall see you on the other side. Enjoy! Witness for the prosecution. Not gonna lie when I first saw this movie that this was requested, I thought it said witness for the protection. No, it is not. Is there too much of draft? Shall I roll up the window? Just roll up your mouth. You talk too much. <laughs> if I'd have known how much you talked, I'd never have come out of my coma. <laughs> wow. For a title like witness for the prosecution, I guess we're gonna see a lot of courtroom action. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody. Back to work. So <laughs> wow. I'm just happy that you're your old self again. Any more sentimentality around here, I shall instantly go back to the hospital. Not very likely they won't take him back. He wasn't really discharged, you know. He was expelled for conduct on becoming a cardiac patient. Put these in water, <laughs> blabber. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he seems like a peach. All these people happy for you to be back, and you're like, yeah, I'm the Grinch. Where's my wig? Right here. Ah, yes, the wigs. I've guarded it with my life. I'm sorry, sir, but you're not to undertake any criminal cases. Not anymore. Your doctors have... Doctors! Wow. They've deprived me of everything. Might as well get a bigger box, more mothballs, put me away, too. <laughs> Two thirty, so well for a time for a little nap. Oh, get out! <laughs> She's so determined. She doesn't even care. My lord, Dashing. members of the jury... Come along now, like a good boy. Oh, no. You take Again, your hands off me, Miss Plimpson. Does I'll not scratch care. you with my cane. Oh, you can never do that. You might break your cigars. Cigars? What cigars? <laughs> the ones you're smuggling in your cane. Cane? Uh. Oh, wow. You could be jailed for this. You had no search warrant for my cane. Oh, my God. He's such a weenie. We've installed something for you here. Uh. It's a lift, sir. The banister Whee! should fall off the banister. This is remarkable, Carter. Smoothest flight I've had in years. Daisy. <laughs> Once more to get the feel of the controls. Oh my goodness. Good afternoon, Carter. Would it be possible to see Sir Wilfred? I'm sorry I didn't bring up. He's a little busy right now. Well, I wish you could help us, Wilfred, but I quite understand. Undo. Take care of yourself. Surely I can give him a word of advice. Now, can I come on me, Hogan? Just wants that cigar. Seems silly to me, but Mr. Mayhew thinks it's very urgent. He, uh, he thinks I may be arrested at any minute. Arrested for what? Well, for murder. Oh. Yeah? Okay. She was a middle-aged widow, rather well off, living with a housekeeper at Hampstead. Mr. Vole had been with her earlier in the evening. When the housekeeper returned from her day off, she found her mistress dead, struck on the back of the head and killed. I see. Damn. Probably think better if you gave me one of those cigars. Of course. There are no of course. I saw in the paper that poor Mrs. French had been found dead with her head bashed in. And it also said in the papers that the police were very anxious to interview me since I'd visited Mrs. French that evening. So, well, naturally, I went along to the police station. Hmm. You, I've taken your cigar and I'm not taking your case. I can't. I'm forbidden. My doctors would never allow it. Yeah, you're going to take it soon. <laughs> Don't open the door. Yeah, Hold you this. nut. Doing my army service unsettled me a bit, that and living abroad. I was stationed in Germany. It was fine there, though. That's where I met Christine, my wife. 
She was an actress and a good one. I, I'm a bit of an inventor. Well, nothing big, just oh, for household okay. things. But my best is really this egg beater. You see, it not only beats the egg, but it also separates the yolk from the white. Wow. The only trouble is that I need money for manufacturing and promotion. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping that that's what Mrs. French might do for me after I met her. Oh. Exactly huh. how did you meet this Mrs. French? Yeah, let's talk about her. Now you can't help but think, what's what's going to happen here? Did he actually do it? Ooh, okay. Uh. You really like this one? Oh, very much. You buy that hat. I insist. Oh. Mm. That was very nice of him. Oh. Uh-oh. Of course. Wearing the hat in the theater? Oh, my God. Would you mind, madam, your hat? Oh, oh it's you. Hello! And after we left the movie, she invited me to her house for tea. <laughs> That is spewing I everywhere. Think it's the most fascinating thing I've ever seen. Compliments of the inventor, manufacturer, and sole distributor. Oh, thank wow. you. We'll use it constantly, won't we, Janet? Uh, <laughs> Are you gonna ah. check it? Damn. Oh my god, she keeps giving him the stink eye. <laughs> how much money did you get from her? From whom? From Mrs. French. Well, oh, nothing, not a quid. The truth, how much? Well, why should she give me any money? Because she was in love with you. Well... That's ridiculous. No, she definitely was. Why didn't you tell her you were a married man? I did tell her. But you never took your wife along when you went there, did you? No, I didn't. Uh-oh. Well, I was afraid she'd lose interest in me. Because she was rich? Yes, I suppose so. And you were after her money? Well, yes, uh in a way. Oh. I was hoping for a loan for my new invention. An honest business proposition, that's all it would have been. Oh, my God. Oh, when I left her, she was alive. When the housekeeper came back, she was dead. Mm. Well, the house had been ransacked. It said so in the papers. It must have been a burglar. Look, I didn't do it. No matter how bad things this look, This is I ridiculous. You must believe me. You do believe me, don't you? Well, it's definitely the perfect sort of setup. I don't, I don't know. I don't think he did it. Christine saw me when I got home. It was 9.26 exactly. My wife will tell you that. Of course you realize, Mr. Vole that the testimony of a devoted wife does not carry much weight. You mean people uh, might think Christine would tell a lie on my account? Right. It has been known, Mr. Vole. If Mr. Vole had been sponging on Mrs. French, why kill her and cut off the source of supply? Or if he'd been hoping for a golden egg, why kill the goose before it was laid? No motive, no motive whatsoever. I mean, yeah, true, right? Well, it's all yours, Brogan Moore. You'll find Mr. Vole very responsive and quite candid. So candid, in fact, he's already informed me we'll have to sue him for our fees. Oh, we'll simply put a lien on Mr. Vole's 80,000 pounds. Oh? What 80,000 pounds? Well, the 80,000 pounds Mrs. French left you. Oh! Uh, left me? They opened Mrs. French's bank vault today and found her will. Oh, my God. Now that... Congratulations. <sighs> that really puts a wrench into it. Well, this inheritance doesn't make things look any better for me, though, does no. it? No. No, I wouldn't think so. So now they'll say that I did have a motive. They will indeed. 80,000 pounds makes for a very handsome motive. Mm. I thought you were crazy, but I guess now they will arrest me, won't they? It's not unlikely. Uh-oh, here they come. Yep. The paddy wagon. I have here a warrant for your arrest on the charge of murdering Emily French on October the 14th last. Would you like a cigar? Pardon me. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Sir Wilfred. I'd better not. It would constitute a bribe. Uh, <laughs> I took it. Going, Mr. Ball. Well, there's one thing I've learned for sure. Never look in a window where there are women's hats. Good day, sir. I guess so. Yeah, I mean, unless he is just putting on the, you know, best act ever and he knew about the will and I don't know. We'll see. Miss Primsel has issued an ultimatum. If you're not in bed in one minute, she will resign. Splendid. Give her a month's pay and kick her down the stairs. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon Mrs. Vole. Handle her gently, especially when you break the news of the arrest. Better have smelling salts ready, a box of tissues and a nip of brandy. I do not <laughs> think that will be necessary. Oh. I'm Christine Vole. Hmm. Leonard has been arrested and charged with murder. Is that it? Yes. 
I knew he would be. I told him so. Hmm. Okay. You take Mrs. Vole inside and explain the procedure. Mr. Brogan Moore will lead the defense. You know, I feel sorry for that nice Mr. Vole. And not just because he was arrested, but that wife of his. We let our boys cross the channel, they go crazy. Uh oh. The person. Sir Wilfred. <laughs> Off he goes. Sir Wilfred. You know that Mrs. French left your husband money? Yes, a lot of money. How did you well, know? Of course, your husband had no previous knowledge of this bequest. I guess it was in the newspaper? Is that what he told you? Well, surely, Mrs. Vole, you're not suggesting anything different. Oh, no, no. I do not suggest anything. Mmm, this is very fishy. Go right ahead, Sir Wilfred. Mrs. Vole, you realize your husband's entire defense rests The damn monocle! I realize that. Mrs. Vole, I assume you want to help your husband. Of course I want to help Leonard. I want to help Mr. Brogan Moore, and I want to help you, Sir Wilfred. <laughs> there. <laughs> Isn't that more comfortable for you? It's like an intimidation tactic. Leonard came home at 9.26 precisely and did not go out again. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Is that better? I don't know about this. She's very, very fishy. Mrs. Vole, whatever your gambit may be, do you know that under British law you cannot be called to give testimony damaging to your husband? How very convenient. We are dealing with a capital crime. The prosecution will oh. try to hang your husband. He is not my husband. What? What is going on? Leonard and I went through a form of marriage in Hamburg, but I had a husband living at the time somewhere in East Germany in the Russian zone. Did you oh. tell Leonard? I did not. Wow, okay. Do not worry, Sir Wilford. I will give him an alibi and I shall be very convincing. And you're satisfied, I hope? Oh, this is interesting and weird. Care to join me in a whiff of those smelling thoughts? Woman's up to <laughs> something, but what? Uh, yeah, the prosecution really? will break her down in no time when I put her in the witness box. I don't know about that. I'll take it from here. Yep. He has the I have called now. Dr. Harrison and given him a complete report on your shocking behavior. I can no longer... Give me a match, Miss Plimpton. <laughs> Did you hear me a match? He is just not taking it. Oh, God. Yeah, this is very strange, though. It really is. Because you have Leonard, who now has, like, a motive to kill the woman... But now you have this wife who clearly has other sort of things going on with her. Definitely more selfish and whatnot. So this is very interesting. I want to read you a portion of the evidence of Janet McKenzie, the housekeeper. Mr. Vole helped Mrs. French with her business affairs, particularly her income tax returns. There's also a hint you may have helped her draft her new will. Oh, that's not true. If Janet said that, she's lying. Uh... She was always against me. I, I don't know why. What about this cut in your wrist? You told the police you cut yourself with a knife. Well, that's true. I did. I was cutting bread and the knife slipped. But that was two days after the murder. Christine was there. She'll tell them when she gives evidence. Yeah, well, she is a loose cannon right now, you a little bit. Something from me. How did you meet your wife, Mr. Fowle? In Germany in 1945. At this moment, I do actually think he's innocent and his wife is the one who may have killed her and is blaming him for it come on let's see him we want she's just trying to play music leave her alone if you won't show him i will oh. yeah beat him up beat him up get him smack him with the accordion asshole What does that say? Out of bounds? Oh my god. You better get out of here. We've had trouble enough. Well, actually, it's your own fault. That costume in the picture outside gave the boys ideas, and then those trousers of yours let them down hard. That costume went in the first raid on Hamburg. The raid by raid, the rest of my dresses, and now you've found my trousers. Oh god, I know. I'm not even gonna comment too much on that. It's our fault. Oh, just, you know what? Nope, nope, nope. Just gonna, we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> uh, Sorry, it's the maze night off. Well, this is pretty horrible. 
No, no, not that chair. It holds up the beam and that holds up half the ceiling. You better sit down on the cot. Uh, uh -huh. Are you married? Why? Well, the, uh... Oh, that. No, no, I'm not married. I just wear it when I'm working. Gives me a little protection with all the men. Didn't work well, too well tonight, though, did it? Yeah, no, no not so much. No, tonight was bad, but it's getting better. Is that a fair rate of exchange? <laughs> Very fair. I may never go home anymore. Oh, Idiot. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. You don't really know, Christine, how she feels about me. But you will when she gives her evidence. Well... Mr. Yeah. Fowl, I must tell you I am not putting her in the witness box. But I can't face this without Christine. I tell you, I'm scared. I need her. Without her, I'm sunk. No, I think with her, you're sunk. Yeah, I don't... Mm, this is gonna be very interesting. Because <laughs> they could also easily do, like, another 180 with this, right? And have her be completely innocent and right and have him be the bad guy. You know what I mean? So it could be anything. You may proceed for the prosecution, Mr. Myers. May it please you, my lord. All the wigs. Of the jury. Can't get over that. This is ridiculous. Just a bit of nervous heartburn. I always get it the first day of a trial. 240 oh above 130? You shouldn't be here at all. I should be uh -oh. in the courtroom. The trial's begun. You're to have a calcium injection daily, tranquilizing pill every hour. I'll set my Jeez. wristwatch alarm. In case of a sudden pain or shortness of breath, pop one of these nitroglycerin tablets from the black box under your tongue. Were there any signs of a struggle? None. Just the one blow. Do you produce a jacket, Inspector? Yes, sir. Is that the jacket? Um, hmm. Where did you find this, Inspector? Uh, that is the jacket found in the prisoner's flat, which I handed to our lab to test for bloodstains. And did you find any bloodstains? Yes, though an attempt what? had been made to wash them out. And was the blood of a particular group or type? Yes, sir. It is type O. And did you subsequently test the blood of the dead woman? Yes, sir. What type was that? The same. Typo. Uh oh, that's not good. Inspector, when you questioned the prisoner as to the stains on his jacket, did he not show you a recently healed scar on his wrist and tell you that he'd right. cut himself with a kitchen knife while slicing bread? Now, is his blood typo? Did you examine the prisoner's blood, Inspector? No, sir. That's, that's I have a big here miss. A certificate. Stating that Leonard Stephen Vole is a blood donor at the North London Hospital and that his blood is Group O. Yep. There you go. Granted that the cut on the wrist was caused by that knife, is there anything to show whether it was an accident or done deliberately after the murder to account for the bloodstains? Oh, How does he know what type of blood she has? Hmm. Call Janet McKenzie. Still giving him that stink eye. Yeah, she really doesn't like immediately like him, so that's very interesting. Oh, did she just try to take it? Oh my god. Afraid to do a bit of honest domestic work? Quite. What I meant was you were on. Ten years I was with her and looked after her. The other girl next to her is just like, what's going on? You heard Mrs. French and oh. the prisoner discussing her new will? Yes. He was to have all her money, she told him, as she had no near relations nor anybody that meant to her what he did. Wow. When did this take place? On October the 8th. One week to the day before she was murdered. Thank you. That concludes my examination. Interesting. Was it actually him? You have given evidence about two wills. In the old will, the will that was revoked, were you not to receive the bulk of Mrs. French's estate? Aye, that's so. Whereas in the new will, except for a bequest to you of a small annuity, the principal beneficiary is the prisoner Leonard Vole. Ooh. What makes you say the man's voice was Leonard Vole's? I know his voice well enough. The door was closed, was it not? Mm -hmm. Aye, that's so. You were no doubt in a hurry to get the pattern, so you probably walked quickly past the closed door, yet you were sure you right. heard Leonard Vole's voice. I was there long enough to hear what I heard. Come, Miss Mackenzie. I'm sure you 
Yeah, you know, she keeps doing the ear yeah, thing, yeah. Sure Did you recently apply to the National Health Insurance for a hearing aid? Uh, for, 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 for what? My Lord, I must yep. the manner in which this... Did you get it? No, not yet. However, you state that you walked past a door which is four inches of solid oak. You heard voices and you are willing to swear that you could distinguish the voice of the prisoner, Leonard Vole. Mm -hmm. No further questions. Yeah. Lots of back and forth. Yeah. Every sort of argument that's presented, uh, he's been able to kind of flip it around and stuff. So, so far, so good. Very interesting. I now call the final witness for the prosecution, Christine Helm. Christine Helm! Uh oh. Oh, this is not going to be good. Are you actually his wife? No. Mrs. Helm, is this a certificate of marriage between yourself and one Otto Ludwig Helm? Wow. Uh, Mrs. Helm, are you willing to give evidence against the man you've been calling your husband? Yes. Oh, man, this is about to get juicy. Ooh. Leonard Vole left the house at 7.30 and returned at 25 minutes past nine. Did he, in fact, return at 25 past nine? No. He returned at 10 minutes past 10. Christine, Ooh. what are you saying? It's not true. You know it's not true. I think she's really throwing him under the bus. I'm not fully... I don't fully know why, but I don't know. Now then, when questioned by the police, you told them that the prisoner returned at 9.25. Yes, because Leonard asked me to say that. But you've changed your story now. Why? I cannot go on lying to save him. What he has asked me to do, I've always done because I was grateful. It was not because he was sort of your a husband. Perfect that you loved setup. Him. To I never throw him loved under the him. bus. Damn. Then this is the truth. Wow. That Leonard Vall returned that night at ten minutes past ten, that he had blood on the sleeves of his coat, and that he said to you, "I have killed her." That is the truth. Ooh, this is oh boy. When you first met the prisoner in Hamburg, you lied to him about your marital status? I wanted to get out of Germany, so... You lied, did you not? Just yes or no, please. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And subsequently, about to rip her apart. You, married, you lied to the authorities. And now today you've told us a new story entirely. <laughs> the question is, Frau Helm, were you lying then? Are you lying now? Or are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? Woo! Yep. I ask you once more, is the evidence that you have given the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. Mm. Then that, my lord, is a case for the prosecution. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, uh, once again, this could really go either way. From where it stands right now, yeah. She really threw him under the bus and... Such, so. Oh, Why are you crying? You? Yes, Nick. It's the first murder trial I've ever been to. It's terrible. Yeah. Leonard Stephen Vole, did you or did you not, on the night of October the 14th last, murder Emily Jane French? I did not. Thank you. That will be all. What? The defense feels his faculties should be spared for the cross-examination by my learned friend for the prosecution. The defense, leaving no stone unturned in its efforts to establish an alibi for the prisoner, circulated this photograph, hoping to bring forth a witness who had seen him leaving Mrs. French's house or entering his own at the times that he has stated. The defense will be pleased to learn that at the last moment a witness has come forward and that the prisoner had been seen wearing this coat and this hat. Oh, no. Lamentably, he had not been seen on the night of the murder, but exactly one week before. On the afternoon of October the 8th, were you or were you not in a travel agency in Regent Street? And did you or did you not make inquiries about prices and schedules of foreign cruises? Well, supposing I did. Uh, oh. It's not a crime, is it? Not at all. Many people go on a cruise when they can afford to pay for it. But you couldn't pay for it, could you, Mr. Vole? And yet you came to this particular travel agency with a clinging brunette. We went in just for fun and I started asking for folders. It was make-believe and childish, but it was fun and I enjoyed it. I believe him. I maybe I might be a fool later down the line in this movie, but right now I believe him. 
You killed Emily French. No, I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't kill her. Oh, man. Yeah, that did not go swimmingly. Do you think she lied? Well, don't you? I don't know. I'm not sure. I am. She lied. Whether she called it mine idol or perjury, she lied. The only question in my mind is why? What's her game? What is she up to? What? Exactly, yeah. Like, what is in it for her? Yes? Is this the Wilford Robart's flight? Oh, yes, it is. Let me talk to the old geezer. Who is Who this? Who is this speaking, please? I've got something to sell him, I have. What in the world? I've got to sell him, believe me, he'll want a bar. It's got to do with that Leonard Bow. Leonard Bow? Uh-oh. It's about that German wife. I've got the goods on her, and it's for sale. Ooh. Well, this can definitely be a scam. But, uh, we'll see. I'm too old and too sick to go on a wild goose chase. Come on, hey, you. Where to, Sir Wilfred? Houston Station. Where do you <laughs> think? <laughs> a complete 180 in about two seconds. Love it. Sir Wilfred, where are you going? Your bath, your <laughs> massage, your dinner, your injection. Thank you, Miss Pimpson. Did you bring any money? What is it you have, madam? Letters. How do we know these are from Mrs. Vole? Oh, she wrote them all right. It's all fair and square. Okay. I hope I so. I hope they fix her good and proper. Now, who are you and what did she do to you? Juicy, ain't they? There's one coming up that's even better. How did you get hold of these? What yeah. difference does it make so long as she gets what's coming to her? Uh -oh. What have you got against her? I'll give you something to dream about, mister. Want to kiss me, ducky? Ooh. Definitely good revenge. Where is she? Oh, she booked it, yeah. All right, well, goodbye. God save the queen. God save the queen. I ask that the case for the defense be reopened and that a witness be recalled. Evidence of the most startling nature came into my possession only last night. Uh, now, what is this new evidence, Sir Wilfred? Letters, my lord. Letters written by Christine Helm. Woo! Yep, here we go with this. Call Christine Helm! About to get a rude awakening. October the 20th, last. What have you got there? Uh, <laughs> a letter. I suggested on October the 20th. You wrote a certain letter. I don't know what you're talking about. Addressed to a man named Max. I did nothing of the sort. The letter was but one of a series written to the same man. Lies. All lies. Crumbling, crumbling. My beloved Max, an extraordinary thing has happened. I believe all our difficulties may be ended. I will not uh -huh. stand here and listen to a pack uh -huh. of lies. That letter's a forgery. It isn't even my letter paper. I write my letters on small blue paper with my initials on it. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like this. Woo! That was very smart. Damn you! <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Leave her alone! Why? Why? She betrayed you! Let me go! Let me get out of here! Let me go! Wow, broke. Will you now read the letter in question so that the jury may hear it? What is the point of a monocle? Is it just for one bad eye? Strange, isn't it? He always said that he would never let me leave him, but now, if this succeeds, he will be leaving me because they will take him away forever and i shall be free and yours my beloved wow I wow count the wow. hours until we are together christine i mean girl you could have just left right like he didn't have to do this and now you're gonna be charged with perjury and you're gonna be in prison for a bit i wrote the letter and that, my lord, is the case for the defense. Yep, 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 yep. Have fun in prison. 
Congratulations, here are your cigars. Not yet. Uh, no. Come on, it's all over. Wrapped up neat and tidy. Ah. Uh, well, what's wrong? It's a little too neat, too tidy, and altogether too symmetrical. That's what's wrong with it. The jury is just coming back. You're not worried oh, about the verdict, are you? It's not their judgment that worries me. It's mine. Come along. Is there going to be another little twist Why here? Oh, boy. Yeah, he's looking real nervous right now. Did he really still kill her then? Hmm. Because it didn't say that she killed him. She just said that he w she was going to lie and be with her actual husband again. So, uh-oh. Do you find the prisoner at the bar, Leonard Stephen Vole, guilty or not guilty of the murder of Emily Jane French? Not guilty, my lord. Thank I you. have your belongings. If you'll come with me, Mr. Vole, and sign the receipt, we can release you. Mr. Vole? <laughs> they didn't call me Mr. when they charged me. I'll go with you. I brought you happen <laughs> Yeah, really. Yes, let's go quickly before they change their mind. They definitely did a guilty before proven innocent kind of deal, calling him prisoner and stuff. Like, damn. Yeah, he's not happy, though, Wilfred. What a wicked woman I am, and how brilliantly you exposed me and saved Leonard's life. The great Sir Wilfred Robarts did it again. You didn't do it alone. You had help. I'm not driving at anything anymore. Leonard is free, and we did it. We? Remember? When I came to see you and you said that no jury would believe an alibi given by a loving wife, no matter how much she swore her husband was innocent, that gave me the idea. What idea? What? I'll give you something to dream about, mister. Wanna kiss me, ducky? Oh. My. I suspected God. something, but not that. Yeah. What? What? And all Why those she... blue letters. It took me hours to write them, to invent Max. There never was a Max. There's never been anyone but Leonard, only Leonard. What? 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 I knew he was guilty. What? What the hell is going on? Why would she do this? That can't be so. Leonard came home a few minutes past ten. He did have blood on his sleeves. He did tell me he had killed a woman. Only I could save him. He pleaded with me. And you saved him, a murderer? Yeah. Again, you don't understand. I love him. <sighs> oh, shit. I told you she was an actress and a good one. Leonard! I knew she was going to Mother f... I just yep. Wow. You got me off, and I can't be tried again for this. That's English law, too, isn't it? You can't touch him now. Nobody can. Well, Fred, the luggage is in the car, and we've only 20 minutes to catch the boat train. Oh, this is a nice young lady I met in the gallery during the trial. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, Len, they've been trying to keep me away from you. It's had me nearly crazy. Leonard, who's this girl? I'm not this girl. I'm his girl. What Tell her, in Len. the... Leonard, what? Is this the girl who was with you in the travel bureau? That's who I am, and I know all about you. We've been going together for months, and we're going away on one of those cruises, just like they said in court. Tell her yourself, Len. Oh, my God. Don't leave me. Don't, Len, don't. Pull yourself together. They'll have you up here for perjury. Well, don't make it worse, or they'll try you as an accessory. I don't care. Let them. Let them try me for perjury, or an accessory, or... Ready? Oh. Or better yet. <gasps> Let them try me for... Oh! Well... <laughs> wow, insta-kill, huh? Carter, what have you done with the luggage? I, I sent it on ahead to the station, and I've got... Oh, my God! <laughs> now to bring the luggage back, you can dismiss the cat. We are not going yet. Oh, we. <laughs> Get broke with more to my chambers and have Mayhew there too. We're appearing for the defense and the trial of Christine Bowl. Whoa. <laughs> you know, I knew there was going to be something at the end there. You know, like the last, I knew there was going to be something 
in the last five, ten minutes, like a twist of some sort. But, uh, yeah, not that. <laughs> in the moment where Christine was basically confessing to Wilfred, like, saying, like, oh, well, you told me to blah, 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 all that stuff at the end there, you know, saying that she did it for him. In that moment, I was so confused. I'm just like, what is she saying? And then it just clicked, right? She literally sacrificed herself in a way for him to get off on this murder so that they they would have the money essentially that is crazy and then it just another twist actually the brunette that he went to the travel place to to look at the vacations and whatnot that was actually going to be the person he was going to end up with and so he's a scumbag, of course. There was that thing. Oh my god, there was that in the back of my mind initially. Remember in the beginning, like I, I think I mentioned it in the in the reaction, or like it, like in in uh, earlier in the reaction, or I just thought it that like he is not how he seems. I actually don't think I said that, but I was thinking that. I really was. And yeah, uh, here we are. Definitely a dirt bag, a dead dirt bag now. But he was definitely not great. <laughs> and he was truly an actor too i mean she was as well of course but he he really was and then she kills him which i mean who left the knife on the table right like <laughs> well whoever did leave the knife on the table i guess that was you know that was good because <laughs> now he's dead and the girl that he was with that brunette you know, she's, she seemed wicked too. Like, what the hell? And then Christine will now be on trial. So, got it. And again, I just knew that there was going to be something there at the end. Some sort of twist, but they really just kind of slammed you with it in the last, like, five minutes. Usually it kind of is drawn out in the last 20, or, you know, 15 minutes of, like, a twist or, like, you know, the reveal or whatever. But they really were just like, bam, 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 right in the last five minutes. Bam, she was, you know, in on it and she was faking the entire time. Bam, brunette comes in with him and he actually is with her. Bam, she kills him, you know? Like, it was just back to back to back. So that was uh really crazy. <laughs> But honestly, overall, that was a lot of fun to watch from start to finish. It was just an interesting story because at least, well, clearly with me, like, you're kind of just listening and watching and you're kind of going through your head like, what could this be, number one, and how will this play out? And like, is this person being truthful? Is that person being truthful? They seem sort of sketchy. They seem sort of fishy. So like, at least with things like this, like, that's always going through my mind and I, you know, say most of it out loud to let you know my thoughts. But yeah, it was just, it was fun in that way because I just kept questioning everybody and what, what, what was, what they were actually saying true, etc. So it was, it was a good time. It was a good watch. So yeah, really overall, I thought this was well done and a, a fun time. And again, just a good watch overall. And I really did enjoy watching it. And with that, if you guys did enjoy watching this reaction, please feel free to like the video. And if you aren't already, please feel free to subscribe. And of course, if you want to watch the full unedited version of this video or it's anything else on my channel, you can absolutely do so over on my Patreon. It is $5 a month for that. And to those of you who are already on Patreon, I really do appreciate you over there. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope you're enjoying all the full unedited reaction videos and the access to the polls. If you want to find me outside of YouTube, you can absolutely do so you can find me pretty much anywhere at ogb reacts i'm mainly over on twitter but i'm also on instagram and tiktok as well and of course a big thank you to kathy ice for subscribing at the tier over on patreon and requesting for me to watch this film i hope you specifically enjoyed this reaction like i said from start to finish this was a good watch it was well done it was it kept you thinking and it kept you kind of like tuned in to what is really going on and whatnot and kept you questioning and i enjoy films like that so i really did like this one with that again really do hope that you guys enjoyed this reaction and i hope to see you all in the next reaction video whatever that may be okie dokie toodaloo adios and goodbye <laughs>